Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Yuraga Wash Processed Ethiopia from Sweet Bloom Coffee Roasters. And there's the bag right there. All right, obviously no need to talk about Sweet Bloom. I feel like I do a Sweet Bloom video on this channel at least once a month. My favorite coffee roaster in the world, and I am looking very much forward to discussing this coffee because it's not what I expected, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with this coffee review specifically. Let me get the details out of the way so we can discuss it. So 16.67 to 1 at 204 degrees. My standard recipe brewed to the Chemex. And Sweet Bloom is a light medium American roast. This one's on the slightly lighter side of what Sweet Bloom typically does, but still in line with that light medium roast profile for an American roaster. All right, let's start talking about this coffee. Day seven, my first impression with this coffee was it's very much a Sweet Bloom coffee, but it's not quite a Guji coffee. This is an Ethiopia Guji, and with that comes this expectation of some really notable and strong peach within the coffee. But that wasn't my first impression. It even wasn't as sweet as I'm used to expecting with both Guji's as well as Sweet Bloom coffees. This is day 19 of this coffee. The purple fruits, the purple flavors as a whole were actually the most prominent thing I was getting, especially day nine. The stone fruits, a little bit more soft towards the end. Day 11, strong, vibrant mouthfeel, what I would describe as a blackberry acidity, with peach a little bit more subtle. And that's what I want to note on Sweet Bloom's website. They say it's a very notable peach acidity with some subtle blackberries. I got the complete opposite. I got some very strong blackberries as well as blackberry acidity with some more subtle peach. So my opinion of this coffee was reversed to what Sweet Bloom had on their website. Day 12, which is when I made the tasting wheel as well. Still emphasizing those purple flavors, very purple forward. Uh, the stone fruits, I felt like were way more prominent as the coffee had cooled down. After you let it sit on your palate, I'm getting maybe some subtle lemon to go along with that blackberry as well. Day 13, strong stone fruit characteristics when the coffee has really cooled down. And again, as it's cooler, more stone fruit forward. Blackberry does taper off as well as it's cooled down. And day 15, which was my fun day for this coffee, best day of the coffee for me, quite stunning as it had cooled down and as it was done as a cold brew. I had this coffee twice on that day. Once I had it made as a cold brew and once just as a regular pour over through my Chemex. And man, it was so impressive as that cold brew. I swear if Sweet Bloom bottled this as a cold brew and sold it, I would probably buy one of those a day because the peachiness that was coming from it was everything you hope for and expect with a peach Gucci coffee and I've already emphasized my love for both Gucci coffees as well as peach forward coffees. Really impressed but what was also equally as impressive was as the coffee had cooled down I was getting a bit of a kind of watermelon and Jolly Rancher taste to it and it was obscure because I didn't get it in any of the, these other days but it was very notable very prominent on day 15 specifically. Day 17, back to those uh, bright purple florals and a bit of stone fruit sweetness at kind of a temperature slightly above room temperature. You know, I was getting some peach forward to start this coffee, but it's still pretty purple fruit, purple floral dominant. What's been so interesting about this coffee to me is it kind of comes off a little bit more like a Kenya than it does like a Gucci to me which is very wild and unexpected for an Ethiopia done, especially from Sweet Bloom. What I've noticed from a lot of recent Sweet Bloom coffees is they're not exactly what you would expect. Let me go ahead and put it to tasting wheel right now so you can see what I was getting. And I noted the sweetness wasn't as high as I'm used to expecting, so it's at level three. Now on this day, I would probably put it at a level four. Definitely had a very vibrant and lingering finish. Floral is very strong. A slight bit higher on the acidity than I'm used to for Sweet Bloom coffees. And the berry fruit, though they said it was a little bit more subtle, it was quite a bit more prominent for me with that blackberry. On the right day though, I feel like that stone fruit could be out of five. That peach, when it's done right, I can't help but feel like I kept missing it. Could be just as peachy as the uh, Ferment Bombay from Onyx. Super peachy coffee when it's done correctly, when it's cooled down. I think when you're drinking at the right temperature, when you're making it as a cold brew, Super peach forward, really nice. I kind of have a ton of overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee and it, it's well known, it's well documented that I'm not the biggest fan of Kenyan coffees, but I have Gucci coffees are 
one of my favorite. So when I was getting it more as a Kenyan coffee, I was a little underwhelmed, a little disappointed. But when it was coming off as more of a Gucci Ethiopia coffee, I was blown away. I was super impressed. It lived up to the hype and expectation of Sweet Bloom. My problem was I struggled to get it right. I was getting it at one point at one. I was getting it one way at one point and another way at another point. So it was actually a little bit more of a tricky coffee than I had thought, expected, or anticipated. The person I would recommend this coffee to is, you know, both. Actually, I will say both. People that do like that kind of blackberry acidic Kenyan coffee with some very strong purple florals, very, very strong purple florals, as well as people that do enjoy that peach, because especially if you like the cold brew. If you make your coffee as a cold brew with a love for peach, do it with this coffee. I'm tempted to buy a second bag of this coffee and just cold brew every single one of them for the foreseeable future, because it's really impressive that way, in my opinion anyway. But I'm gonna leave it at that different, unique review for me for Sweet Bloom. They always seem to kind of do something a little different outside of the norm for me. But I'd love to know your thoughts if you've tried this coffee as well. Uh, were you able to figure it out as easily? Did you get a different impression? Were you more in line with Sweet Bloom or were you more in line with what I'd gotten from this coffee? If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Uraga Wash Processed Ethiopia from Sweet Bloom. Thank you for watching.